All right, so now we can start hacking a Windows machine, a uh, Windows program at the binary level, and we're going to start with Ollie Debug, which is a big favorite because you can use it to cheat on Windows games. That's a, way, a fun way to get started. So you can use any Windows machine for this. Um, I used Server 2016 at first, and now I'm going to use the Flare VM, which is what I like using these days because it's very nice, has all the tools you need. But all you really need for this one is Hashcalp and Ollie, which you can install on any version of Windows. So here's the Flare VM. And so I've downloaded this PuTTY program. And the first thing is to make sure that the hash value is right. So if I go to my Downloads folder, I'll see this PuTTY.exe. And I can now run Hashcalc. And I can just drag that and drop it in there. And it'll give me some SHA values. I need the SHA-256 value. So I'm going to check that and calculate again. All right. Now the SHA-256 value starts with 9F9, and that's correct. So this is the right version of PuTTY. Uh, this is an old version of PuTTY. There's nothing particularly special about it. But you just have to use this one, or you won't find the right flags. And I based this on some uh, blog I found that showed how to hack PuTTY, and I thought it was a great way to get started with assembly language. So what PuTTY does, if you just run it, oh, and by the way, before I do anything else, I'm going to copy and make a version I call PuTTY2, just because it's pretty easy when using Ollie to accidentally save the modified version of a file on top of the original. So I want to keep my original here in case I accidentally destroy it. So to run PuTTY, you just double click it, of course. And uh, Windows protected by unrecognized app. Yeah, this is annoying. If Windows does something foolish like that, you have to go to Properties and um, Unlock here. This is Sometimes Windows does this. It freaks out about a program, although this one's even a well-known program and signed. So I don't know why it's griping now, but anyway. Now I can run it. So PuTTY is just an SSH client, among other things. And you can put the name of an SSH server here, like one of mine, ad.samsclass.info. And when you open it, it will prompt you to log in. It's going to ask you a question, just say yes. And here it says, log in as. And now I could put in a username and password, but I don't care about that. All I care about is this much functionality, where it prints this message, log in as. I want to hijack that operation. So I'm going to close it. All right, and let's take a look at it in Ollie Debug. Debugging is the easiest way to um, manipulate programs at the binary level. I'm using the older version of Ollie Debug, which is good enough. There's nothing much in the new version that matters. I'm just going to say yes to these Dill messages. And now I can open my PuTTY, which I put in the Downloads folder. And I'm going to use PuTTY2. All right, now when this loads, um, let me go to my options. Um, appearance and fix the font. I'm going to mod change this one to make it bigger. A Lucida bold 14 might be good. There we go. That'll make it a lot easier for the video and people watching on Twitch. All right. When you first start PuTTY, it might show you something. Now, I'd like to see this stuff here, where it's going to start calling PuTTY. That's the actual compiled code written by the developer. But if I'm running 32-bit code on a 64-bit machine, it doesn't start me at the start of the code that the developer compiled. It starts me at some Windows um, Microsoft code, which prepares the 32-bit Windows on Windows subsystem. So. Every time you launch something in a debugger, it starts out paused down here in the bottom right hand corner. And you can run it with this little run button. So you hit this run button once, and it will run and then pause again here. Although I guess it actually opened this time. Anyway, this will do. This gets me to the interesting part of the code. Um, and I think I'll pause it here. Anyway, I'm not going to. All right, let me just try that again. Debug, restart. Yes. That starts here. Ah, it did go to the right place this time. All right. Anyway, um, 
Now I'm seeing the actual code, I think. Okay, get version X. All right. Um, so this is the assembly code here that runs PuTTY. Here's the registers. And the thing about the debugger is it always puts the most useful information on the right and the bottom. This is because real experts learn how to read this assembly code, which is pretty dense if you're a beginner, and they put the, entry, the handy um, milestones that a beginner can read over on the right and at the bottom so it's easy to ignore. So when you are a beginner, you start at the bottom right and then you read the stuff on the right. And you can see here the name of the Windows system call. It's getting the version and uh, and so on. So we can run this thing in PuTTY and see the message. So if I run it, it's going to open a PuTTY window, which doesn't come to the front. And if I go here and put in the name of a server, and open this, then it shows me this login as message, and that's where I've gotten to. So now I would like to find the code that prints that message. So I can do that easily in PuTTY. If you go to the code pane here, this is the code pane, here's the registers, this is the stack, and uh, this is a place where you can just dump any region of memory you like and see it in uh, hex and ASCII. So I can right click here and search for all referenced text strings. This will find strings that are used by the program. And make sure when you do it that you're seeing text strings referenced in PuTTY. If you've run the program to a strange place, you might be looking inside the Windows operating system. And then, of course, you won't find the strings put there by the developer of PuTTY. Now I can scroll to the top and search. Uh, right click, search for text. And I can look for login as and say OK. And it finds an occurrence of login as. Now there's going to be two of these, and I don't know which one of them is the one that's used to print it. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here by pressing F2. That puts a red mark there. And now I can right click Search Next and put a breakpoint here. And now if I right click Search Next, it won't find any more. A little yellow message appeared. So there's only two of them. So I can now find out which one of them actually uh, is used. So I'm going to debug restart and say yes. It's going to run the program and pause it right away so I can see what's going on. Then I run it. It opens up the box. I give it uh, the name of the server and say open. And now it's ready to print that message, and now it stopped. So now I can see where it is. It's at 41CB6E. So now I know where the instruction is that prints that message, and you can see it right here. So this is the address of the instruction. These are the raw hexadecimal bytes of the instruction. Here's the assembly language mnemonic, push putty to this thing, pushing this number, and over here, in the hints area, it shows you that that number points to login as. And if you want to, you can right click here and follow and dump immediate constant. And it will find this number and dump it down here. And you can see that it is login as. Here it is, and then a null terminator. So that's this, this is the code that prints that message login as. So I can modify this code. If I right click, and assemble. It'll show me this command in assembly, push 467C7C, and I can change it. I'm just going to make it 7D and assemble, and then cancel. And now it's changed that number so it prints to the points to the O instead of the L. So now it's pointing to the second character, Ogin as. All right, now I can save this. Right click in the area you've changed. This took me a long time to get this straight in Ollie. If you make multiple changes and try to save the file, you will often not get them all saved. So I right click in this area where I made the change and copy to executable all modifications. This is a lie. It's not going to get all modifications. It's only going to get all modifications in the section of the program that you right clicked in. So I had to right click in that area where I changed the code. Anyway, now I can copy all. I have a file. Right click, save file. And now I can change it to PuTTY 3. 
All right, and I'll close Ollie for now. And when I run that one, which should be in my downloads folder, here's Putty 3. All right, when I give it a server, why is it not popping up? There it is. All right, AD class.info and open. Now it prints a message and the message is Augen as missing the L. So now I've been able to modify code. Now let me just mention something very strange about Windows here while we're here. Putty is signed code. If you right click on Putty and go to properties, there's a digital signatures tab and it shows you here the name of the author and a timestamp and so on. If you click on that and go to details, it'll tell you the digital signature is OK. Now the whole point of signed code was in the first place Windows shouldn't have complained and blocked me from running this because it's signed code unless they have some reason to mistrust this developer. And the other point of signed code is you can tell if anybody's been modifying it. So I just modified this program. If I go to properties and go to digital signatures, the signature is there. But if I go here, it tells me the signature is not valid. And yet, when I double-clicked it and ran it on the modern version of Windows 10, it didn't warn me. It didn't block it. So what's the point of the signature if you don't do anything about a broken signature? This is a bizarre feature of Windows. Anyway, now that you can modify code, you can just find some flags here. There's, um, you can alter the login message. Um, then you can... Um, when you're done with that one, I think you just take the hash of that one to get a flag. Uh, no, then you do this one. Then you modify the message directly in the text section. So you take the letters and change them here to badness. And then you take a hash of that one to get the flag. And then there are some fun games here that you can check out too, um, which I think I'm going to show you one of these in a separate video. So I'm going to stop this one.